So does your terrain look something like this or do you have no idea how to create terrain? Well you're in luck because I can show you how to create terrain like this or this. Actually not that. Not exactly how sure that got there. But you'll see how I made this. It's made up of biomes like deserts, flat grasslands, taigas and it has some mountain ranges and the best part is they're all procedurally generated. The first important thing to understand is terrains are commonly generated via noise functions. Luckily, the Godot comes with pre-built noise functions like simplex noise. The idea behind how Perlin or simplex noise works is a set of random points are set and those values are then interpolated to produce a smooth output. With this, you can create terrain, but they look too smooth and predictable. So we can layer different noise maps with different scales and amplitudes and mix them to create some variation. This is how you can create octaves. But sometimes this is still a bit predictable. So I mentioned biomes before, right? Well, I'll add biomes that'll influence the terrain height. But before I begin, I'm gonna need a Red Bull here. This first method here involves masking different height noise maps. Each mask represents a biome that is multiplied with another noise map that's the biome's terrain height map. And each of the masks are normalized, so each cell equals to one, so it's treated like a probability cell. And after they're normalized, each biome's noise mask is multiplied with the biome's height map and are all added together to create this final overall height map. Now it had what I was looking for, as at least the plains were sort of flat, but most deserts are just mountainous. There isn't really just much variation to it. Besides a downside of this method, it easily adds up computation as you keep adding more biomes for each noise map that's created. But instead I moved on to a different approach, mostly because of the performance I could just face in the future. So this method is a common way that's been shown many times here. And it's a really nice simple method that involves generating a temperature and moisture noise map. With those two values, we can define each cell what biome it'll be. For example, we can say the deserts would reside in high temperatures and low moistures, or taigas would reside in average temperatures and low moistures. But say, how do we decide what temperatures and moisture I'm values define a desert I'm or taiga? Well, this image here will tell you. It's the Whitaker biome plot. It's a plot of biomes of its temperatures and moistures, which is based off the real biome data samples. At least I assume so, but it's a nice guide for generating accurate or somewhat accurate biome maps. With that, you'll be able to generate nice maps like this. But my problem was a simple way to manipulate the terrain. Instead, I was creating very hard cutoffs between biome borders because there's no telling of how much that biome is just really what biome it is. So basically there was no way of me being able to blend biomes. All right, all right. I think it's fair since we're far from this video. I think you could hit that like button, please, if you could. But anyways, so I got desperate and Googled methods for generating biomes with different terrain and found this snippet of code. But all I found was how to have flat terrain and mountain terrains mixed up. So the code wasn't wasn't that useless at as it served some possible solution here but after chronically programming failed maps i finally came up with something that works first significant change i got rid of mountain biomes as it doesn't make sense to treat them as a biome instead they'll have a separate noise map that can be in any biome as that makes the most sense since mountains are a topography feature and we'll use the temperature noise map, but biomes are represented by a point in a graph instead of ranges in a graph. So each cell in the temperature and moisture map are the X and Y coordinate points and are calculated the distance formula for each biome control point. Then they're normalized to add up to one, which will return each a biome weight. With these biome weights, they're a way that mask off multiple biomes without needing multiple noise masks. Also, with biome weight, this prevents the reliance on Gaussian blur to interpolate biomes. So I found inspiration from Henrik Nyberg, who explained how Minecraft world terrain generation works. And I borrowed the idea of spline curves to shape the terrain. And then at last, each biome weight is then multiplied with the filtered biome terrain height and are all summed up together 
resulting with this final terrain height. So now, if you could please comment below if any of this made sense to y'all and if you have any ideas or criticisms to improve this current system of terrain generation, I would love to hear it right below in the comments. But I'm not done yet. I brought back the marching cubes algorithm, but I had to create a separate node that's attached to a script and retrieves the marching cubes index table. This really annoyed me. So if anyone knows a better way to get access to the, to the table without a separate node, y'all could let me know here. I then did a little extra little fun here and converted this map into a 3D noise map by fitting the 2D height map in a 3D noise map. Of course, it did affect the quality of the terrain, but just a bit. If anything, it still looks pretty good. Now, it's not worth the computing power if we're only going to use 2D noise. So, if we were to add some 3D noise to it, it adds a little bit more interesting effect to our terrain here. But, but with a little more tweaking here and there to the 3D noise, this can get, of course, much better. But anyways, we've now reached the end of this video. So hopefully you learn a little on creating procedural terrain with biome. So don't forget, if you really enjoyed this, hit that like button. And of course, smash that subscribe button and see y'all real soon.